evening, everyone, and welcome to the town board regular meeting uh, for May 23rd, 2017. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Present. Oh, present. Right. Almost present. <laughs> Here. We'll begin with a public hearing in the matter of the 2017 Cabaret License Renewal for the Westchester Ballroom. Is so, there anyone here who's come to address the board? So just to give a brief overview before you get started, um, we have two public hearings on our agenda. As you heard, we're starting with the cabaret license for Westchester Ballroom on North State Road. Um, we have the proprietor, Ms. Barbara Antes, here with her uh, counsel um, to give us an update. As you remember, we had asked Ms. Antes to remediate some noise concerns on the site as a condition of approving this renewal. Welcome. Good evening, um, Madam Board. My name is Vincent Savino. I'm the attorney for um, the sad days in Westchester Ballroom. I'm here tonight to uh, address the board in connection with the uh, 2017 cabaret license renewal. I submitted a, a letter earlier today, which I believe has addressed most, about all the concerns from the board and the public regarding um, remediation of sound levels. Um, if you have any questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer them. But um, could you just take us through the highlights of the letter since we just received it and the board hasn't had a chance to review it yet? Sure. That would be great. <clears throat> we started um, the process of soundproofing um, parts of the uh, back rear door. Um, one of the concerns was that um, it might be possible um, that sound is escaping through the back door. And that was part of an engineer's report that was submitted, and you'll see a copy in my letter to saying that um, that was one of the recommendations that there should be insulation around uh, around the back. And that process has started it's about 75, 80 percent through. Um, we've ordered more Roxel sound uh, proofing insulation. Um, as soon as it comes in, we'll finish the installation. We also met with the uh, building inspector, uh, John Hamilton, who came to take, took some pictures and confirmed that we are doing the work and um, it's moving forward. Um, and that's made a um, made a big difference from uh, from what I'm told in, in some of the sound levels that, that, are, that are going outside. Um, part of what we also proposed um, was installing a sign towards the back door, saying that the door must be re uh, remain closed at all times um, so that there's no um, normal um, access through. Um, it would be used really just for emergency basis. It wouldn't be someone kind of going outside and leaving the door open, that sort of thing. We understand from some of the police reports, again, as attached as attachment C, that it might have been possible that some of the sound has, has come out the back while people are, are exiting and entering the building through that door. And while that may be just a temporary occurrence, to, uh, we want to make sure that that's addressed as well. We'll steer towards people with usual access to through, through other uh, doors. And the last would be in, um, installing a panic hardware system on the door. So again, it, it wouldn't um, it wouldn't be a typical door. It would have to be um, something that you would have to kind of push open and alarm would go off and again to discourage um, the normal or, or typical use of it as a regular door. Really more of kind of uh, for um, for, it wouldn't be for non-emergency use, really just for emergency use only, that sort of thing. So those are the three things that we've proposed. They were a part of um, an engineer, the town engineer's report, uh, including the, his measuring of sound decibel levels um, when he visited the property. And again, that that uh, engineer's report is attached as as uh, attachment B of my letter. Um, and I believe, again, it addresses the town board's concerns as well as the letter from Mr. Silverberg, which I've attached as exhibit A to my letter. Uh, and we think that that is going to uh, improve uh, or lower, I should say, any noise levels or sound levels around the building, again, in an effort um, to, uh, to be good neighbors. So we're confident that we're in compliance with the town code in connection with noise. But again, um, to be good neighbors, we're happy to do more. When do you anticipate finishing this work? Well, um, part of the, uh, um, the agenda that I noticed that there was a resolution. Um, we're happy to, to, to comply with that and say that you know we can do it by June 15th. I mean we're happy to, to do that, but we could, um, you know, I, I would anticipate it would probably be more like two weeks, um, depending on um, depending on the situation. But I'm sure we can comply by June 15th. 
Okay, so so if we do um, decide to adopt that resolution tonight, then um, what we, we would can, do it would be conditional. We can, those, we can have those three things done by June fifteenth. Right. It will. It, it would be conditional upon the completion of those three things. Um, you said the back door. There was, if I remember, there's a metal door and a back door, and you doing both. We are uh, the the back door where um, is towards the, the side of the building is where. Um, you know, sometimes people go in and out, that right. sort of thing, and that's where we're going to put the sign and, and the panic uh, the panic alarm where no one uses it, I guess, on, on a typical basis. Um, the back door, what you may be talking about, is kind of a roll-up door, which right. has more insulation on it. And, okay, uh, so and you're addressing right. both areas. We're addressing both Okay, areas. thank you. But So insulation is going on the roll-up door. Right, that's right. right. And the back door is to be not to be used. The, they're putting in the panic bar and the sign to discourage anybody using it to go out for whatever reason to not use that door because that's where the noise is coming out of. Okay. All right. So we're confident that we can have those three things done by, by the 15th. Okay. Do we need to, would we need to do anything conditional just to make sure that it's actually done before the cabaret license is? Well, the proposed resolution that you adopted says that it has to be completed by the 15th of June. So we arrange for the, Building inspector to go out okay. on the fifteenth and make sure that it's been done. Okay. I have a couple of questions about the resolution as well, though, if we're going to adopt it. As is, I mean, this is the first time I have seen it. Um, if I could, um, the on the resolution um, part two, going forward, applicants shall provide to the town supervisor office with at least seven days' notice of all events, classes, and or activities that will be held at the studio that will uh, last past eight p.m. I mean, most of the of, uh, the studio is open. Sometimes till nine, ten at night, having classes. So I mean, that's a, a typical, typical day of classes at the studio. Um, most of the calls that my understanding are coming in are on the weekends for the parties, but there are classes that occur during the week um, that may sometimes go to ten o'clock. So um, I mean, it, with the exception of Sunday, yeah, which I, I think it goes to maybe. But do you have a monthly? Do you have a monthly calendar that that you establish when the classes are and what time they go till? Uh, we can. I mean, not only it's, it's also posted on the website, but we're happy to to send you an email. I mean, there's a distribution list that's sent out regarding classes and times and schedules. We're happy to add you to the to the email list, and I believe the email list goes out weekly, okay. so you'll be able to see it. So as long as we can, yeah, as long as that's ac as long as that accurately reflects right. the um, the uh, whatever you know events that you're having there, including any special events, sure. um, special parties. I don't know if you if that is included on your email e-blast or whatever then that that would be fine good it's also just so everyone knows as well as the public www.westchesterballroom.com and some of the events are planned out two three months in advance so if there's any question you can always check the schedule as well it's public knowledge that would be fine great and we again we'll add you to the email list yep as long as we get added to the email list that, that okay. would be my my email and i'll give you one other email to add good um the only other issue I have is, is number four. Um, any event uh, class activity that will have happen after 8 p.m. Again, classes um, sometimes go past 8 p.m. On, on a weekday. Um, you know, it, it may go to nine. It may go to ten. So, I mean, if I'm sorry. Is, what, if, what is it? Number four. Or? Number four. Any event class activity that will last after 10 p.m. Um, so typically, classes again during the week. I mean, it's a it's a constant thing that classes would would happen would occur at nine, ten at night. So what are you having an issue with? Well, well, if you're looking to, um, if you're looking to know whether or not the classes are, are happening, um, you know, for any event classivity that will happen after 8 p.m., Barbara Ante's Craig Streeter is not with Westchester Ballroom anymore, so we could take his name off that. Okay. Or another possible, the, the ability to contact Mr. Ante, Mrs. Streeter. Um, again, uh, we're happy to do that. They can always call the. Um, they can all the call, call the Westchester Ballroom. Are understand. they typically on site during these classes? They are. So well, not that's... not obviously not um, Craig Streeter, but okay, um, so. Barbara Antis is. It okay. says or another responsible employee right. with the ability to contact Ms. Antis. Which is fine. Okay. Again, yeah, the purpose of that was to make sure that if, if there's a complaint, the police come. There's not somebody there who goes, oh, yeah, I don't know what to do. Right. And Barbara's typically at the site with the classes anyway. And if not, if Barbara's not there, that there's always somebody at the front who will be able to contact her or, or even contact me. If right, that, that's the idea. Okay. okay. So we'll have a, just a friendly amendment to delete Mr. Streeter from that. I don't know if he's within any other part of that resolution, but um, I, think and sure. on, I think that's it. 
Uh, and on the last sentence on that, if the police are called as a result of a noise disturbance, immediately have to be notified by the police. The sound level shall be reduced and not be increased during the remainder of such event class activity. Um, the issue that I have with that is that there, I mean, it seems a very subjective kind of rule. I mean, what we're looking at is should there be, I think that there should be some kind of evidence. I think it should be worded in a different way. Whereas if, if she's presented with some kind of evidence, and my understanding is that the police have sound me that a violation has occurred, then of course she would lower the music. We're not talking about necessarily uh, issue of a violation. The, the problem that we've been told about is that um, sometimes noise is because of a bass that's pounding that people hear, uh, and, and it's disturbing to them, you know, late in the evening. And what's happened is, again, there have been a number of statements by people to this effect that when uh, the police arrive, it gets turned down for a short period of time, and then when the police leave, it gets cranked up again. So we're trying to avoid that. Right. Well, I think she's addressed that. I think part of it is that she's um, gotten rid of the subwoofers, and I think that was part of the, the, the conversation or, or a letter that was submitted, part of the uh, the town engineer's report. So um, the DJs that come in are, are have different equipment these days, so you're not going to hear that, that pounding or that thumping anymore. Well, then it won't be a problem. Right, but I thought DJs right, but weren't the, bringing the in their own equipment. Is, right. but the concern is that if you know, there should be also be is compliance with the code as as opposed to compliance well, with. Well, again, we're not talking about a violation has been issued. If the violation has been issued, then there has to be a demonstration that there's been a lack of compliance with the code. But if the police are getting complaints about the noise, we're trying to avoid disturbing the neighborhood uh, and still being allowing your client to operate, and so. The issue is if, if they turn it down and the police say, okay, that's good, and then the police go away, and five minutes later it gets cranked up again, then it doesn't solve the problem. Right. But um, part of the police reports that I've seen, especially uh, the recent ones that I submitted as attachment C, were saying that you know they can't hear anything from the, um, right. from the complainant's and, property. You and know, again, this is something that we've had an experience similar to this on another property in another part of town where you may not hear the noise directly outside, but you are able to hear the noise in a different topography that might be higher up, you know, the, if the, the way that the land goes is kind of uphill, and that's how the sound travels through the ground, and they're, they're experiencing these low bass vibrations, essentially, that may or may not be able to be picked up by a sound meter. Now, we have asked, um, and we will send our engineer out, and. We're hopeful, again, that you will be a good neighbor. That's what we're trying to say is I understand, and I think the board understands, that you want to be able to have parties. And, and we're hopeful that whatever mitigation that you put into place will make it so that you can have your parties and you can put the music up very loudly inside and nobody knows that you're having that party. That's fantastic. Then everybody's happy. Um, but if, in fact, there are people who are experiencing, I don't think that these neighbors are driving around waiting to see when you have an a big party and then calling a complaint. In fact, it's been quite the, the opposite where they have no idea and suddenly they're having an experience of sound or noise or vibrations in their home. So that's what we're, we're trying to avoid that happening. If we, if in fact the police are called and somebody has to be sent out to see what's happening, we want you to turn the music down for the rest of the event. But, that, but again, that it is subjective. I agree with you. It is subjective. Be good neighbors. You don't come in there? Okay, then we'll come in there. Oh, I, you want to say something? I think you addressed all the issues. We had several issues on here. I think you addressed them. I think that um, uh, the Roxel is really soundproofing that we put in. Um, and we had a sound engineer measure the wall and tell us how much to put in. We have gone in the backyard. We have tested it over and over. And there is nothing coming out of the building at this point. So again, I mean, the only other thing that I would suggest, because it worked for another property owner, is if in fact there's a complaint that comes to you during during an event that you take the time go out have the experience for yourself and then see if there's anything else that there's that you're able to do if in fact that happens it may not hopefully this is going to take care of the problem We're, we'll all cross our fingers and hope that this is you know you're able to do this and and it will be done so that's the other one dragged down for what five years yeah um i have a question 
So did, did I understand you correctly that you have tested subsequent to putting up the, or the, the job's not done yet? So it's are not. you going to be uh, testing after you do the mitigation? We have tested for ourselves. The engineer hasn't been back. John Hamilton was there. Um, he had suggested a little more of the same Roxel soundproofing um, above and below. And um, he, he had, you know, was there also. None of us had any trouble with the, uh, the, you know, with the sound outside. But Dan, your engineer, has not been back yet for the final I guess, inspection. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I've got a copy of Dan's letter. It's attached uh, to my letter that I submitted to the board, and you'll see that uh, and we're well within code. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, is there anybody yes. else here to address the board um, on the cabaret license for Westchester <laughs> Ballroom? Okay. So can I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Abstentions? Thank you. All right. Our second public hearing this evening is local law number four, formerly local law number two for the purpose of amending the zoning and cabaret chapters of the town code. Since our conversation at um, last week's work session, our planning consultant, David Stolman, has been working on a revised law, but it will not be available until later this week. Um, so um, after we hear from the public on this, just wanted to let everybody know that we will be uh, adjourning this public hearing until the board special meeting on Tuesday, June 6th. Anybody here to address the board on the zoning law number I don't remember which number two formerly number two now local law number four hi Bruce Fiorito hello supervisor Levenberg members of the board okay so another week went by I had uh, several conversations with my neighbors and uh, and again as we go through life you know the greatest thing of a board difference of opinions hopefully create the best opinion so and we all look to life through different windows so I look at it through a business point of view um, I don't necessarily agree with what the public planner has proposed because in so many towns as you know the little businesses are getting squeezed out however if the neighborhood wants you know housing and you know it's not like I'm gonna put a building in for my own equipment or anything else then I uh, would say I'll go along with that. So, uh, with, you know, meeting with the neighbors, which are important. Now, one of the issues I really believe came up because I got a letter. I don't know who else got a letter, but, you know, the mind is a dangerous thing. And we went through <laughs> meetings from January to April, and we tossed and turned this whole thing back and forth from house to building to artist loft and this to that. And obviously, the neighborhood was not aware of this. So this is an issue. Now, just for instance, a sidebar, I have a piece of property in Buchanan, and they were doing something on the street, and it didn't matter to me, really. But we all got certified letters. So P.S. talking to some of my neighbors, who I also had valued as friends, and had hoped that they valued me as a person they could rely on, um, they kind of felt like we did a backroom deal and that upset me and I think it would upset you people too because we know from our council that you can't talk to me about it or you can't talk to anybody about these things except at the public hearing so this is a little another little sidebar issue that should be addressed so now all of a sudden they heard about it we had kind of tossed it turned and then it was a done deal and then all of a sudden all hell broke loose so Anyway, that being said, I'm glad they came forward. I don't want to be anybody's enemy, nor do you. And um, so what I asked for, in consideration, as you know my whole story a hundred times, and everybody knows I spent a quarter million dollars plus on this thing, that water from the town, water from my neighbors, that I have handled, and, and probably 
the neighbors on the hill had no idea the ravage I went through. Now, I turned in pictures to you people. I turned in reports to you people dating back to the 90s, letters to the town board from my father's attorney at the time. So this isn't made-up news. You know, one guy gets up as if we dug the hill out and it came down. Well, I gave you pictures showing full-grown trees, 50, 60 years old, on that hill before the hill collapsed. So you know we didn't dig it out, but they missed all that conversation. So then they came in quite upset, and I don't necessarily blame them. I mean, I think I would feel the same way if I thought someone was pulling the wool over my eyes. So that's what started it. So anyway, now we're here. <laughs> and um, so I asked the board with the, what I have spent and my investment, and I really didn't need to buy this property, and the town didn't take care of the situation, the neighbors didn't take care of the situation, I bore the burden. I don't pick the money off a tree. I worked hard, sweat, blood. I was ravaged by this. You saw some of hundreds of pictures I had. That being said, I will, and I bought this property as general business, and I will relent to give me whatever zone you feel apropos. Let me put a two-family house on it. I talked to the, the neighbors, and if that'll work for the board, if that'll work for the neighbors, I will accept that and I will put something tastefully done and clean it up and continue the project I'm involved with now that I'd have over $100,000 in fixing that property at this point and, uh, and call it a day. We're not, I'm not here to upset anybody. You aren't here to upset anybody. And I think this is what we have to do. Um, I also said to some of the names, someone said Y and C instead of R. To me, it doesn't matter. Call it anything you want. Looking at it, if I was just a man sitting at a desk, not knowing the town, not knowing the neighborhood, not knowing anybody, just looking at the plan in front of me, I'm looking at a plan as it stands now before the change that is this little half acre that has GB on four sides of it. Now, two sides are getting changed in neighborhood commercial. The other side is still GB. So I was asked, why not change it to R? Objectively, and I'm an extremely objective person, looking at a map, why would you put R? in the middle of GV and, and NC. Call it what you want. This is what ultimately I will feel will be the right thing for me that I've made a ton of investment in this and stayed awake many nights for the last 20 years on this. And, uh, and I, and I want to make everybody happy. Okay. okay Thank good you night. very much. Thank you. How many letters did we send out when the process first started? So I was going to actually just um, ask council, as we have gone through this process and we have ad adapted the local law, each time that we changed it, I don't, I know we noticed it, but I don't know if we sent letters out every time that it was changed. I, I don't, I don't believe you did. I don't believe you were required to because what you did is you continued the hearings. Right. And then based upon comments you received at each of the hearings, you've made modifications right. to the law. Right. Um, and you're not required to send notice to everybody uh, every time you continue a hearing. Okay. But at I know, first, but did, at first, we did at the very, but at, at first, same, every, everybody every was, household. every household was mailed. So just, just to be clear on that. Okay. Buddy? Do you remember when we sent the letter? I feel like people feel like they I, I forget when we actually opened it, but um, it was last year. Okay. March. Uh, uh, Stephen Hampton, 2013 Quaker Ridge Road. I'm not sure, are you discussing the, just Don't. that property or the no. two, the other two properties? We are, are discussing are the local law number four, which is amending the zoning and cabaret chapters of the town code. So anything that has come up as um, in our conversation or in the, the local law amendments. So that would include the studio one bedrooms on those Correct. properties up there. Okay. Yes. Uh, first then let me say this. I, I really like the command Bruce for what he's done. Uh, you know, he, he came with an open mind. He, he spoke to his neighbors and came to a great resolution. And, and that's what a, you know, what a great thing for the whole town and community. Uh, at the same time, I think the board should do what Bruce did. You need to listen to the community and because if you're going to put all these homes up there, is, or apartments, 450 square foot apartments, uh, 
this is exactly the problem. You know, you need to go up there and look. I, I remember one, at one of the meetings, one of the council members talked about when she lived there and how great it was. Well, that was a long time ago. Things have changed. Waterview didn't exist in those days. The traffic through there is horrendous. There's no sidewalks. If you're going to put densely populated apartments in there, you're going to destroy that neighborhood. And, and this is what the people have been trying to tell you. You know, they don't want this. They don't want the commercial. They don't want the traffic. It's, it's a problem already. You, if you go up there, you see it. Cars are parked on the street because they, they don't have driveways. So now if you're going to put all these apartments, it's going to be a big problem for the neighborhood. So I think as a board, you need to listen to the Crotonville people and go up there and experience what, how they live and the, and the problems with the kids getting on the bus and the traffic through there. The other thing I'd like to say is, I don't know if this is part of the artist in residence, but I was an artist in residence in New York City for 20 years. I had an artist in residence uh, law space. It was 3,000 square feet. <laughs> You cannot be an artist in 450 square feet. You cannot be an artist in a uh, four bedroom is 1,200 square feet. It's, you, I don't know what artist you're thinking about, but I started out in a s over 600 square foot space, which in within a year I had to move to 2,500 square foot space, and then I ended up in a three, over 3,000 square foot space. So if you're thinking about artists, you can't put them in the, it, you know, artists need space. That's what artist spaces are about. That's why everybody, that area in Soho, New York, became artists in residence because there was all these old manufacturing buildings and there was all these huge spaces for artists. Like they, they could go in there and you had the space to work. I had 3,000 square feet with 12 foot ceilings. And, and that's artists in residence kind of space. I mean, if you're truly, really talking about artists in residence. That, that's the kind of space you need, not 450 square feet or even a four bedroom, 1,200 square foot. It's just not going to work. Uh, I have some, there were some petitions that went around. I have an additional 15 I'd like to submit to someone. Okay. Is there anyone else who's come to address the board on this issue? Not seeing anyone. Anyone? May I have a motion to adjourn this to the June 6th meeting? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. So, um, as I mentioned, um, that June 6th is the next opportunity. We have a fifth Tuesday uh, coming up, which is the last Tuesday in May. So, um, we are not planning to have a meeting that evening. We often take off the last, uh, fifth, if there's a fifth Tuesday. And unless I have any objections from my esteemed colleagues, I don't think that I If see you any. had scheduled it, I wouldn't have been here, so <laughs> no uh, I will. Either. I do have a few announcements I would like to make to cover important events that will be happening before we see each other again in June. Um, first, I want to mention some of the great community events that um, some of us attended this past weekend because it was a very busy yeah. one. On Saturday, I joined many of our community members and my fellow Austin Microfund board members for a microfest at the home of Nancy Edelman. And uh, it was a fantastic event. And I was very pleased that this is a wonderful organization that uh, offers no interest loans to community, community um, members who have one-time obstacles. Um, we've been very successful. And I was very pleased to attend that event. And uh, there was a great turnout of loan recipients as well as community members. Uh, that evening, I was honored to attend Boy Scout Troop 49's Eagle Scout Court of Honor at St. Augustine School. Um, the seven young men who have ascended to the rank of Eagle Scout exemplify the virtues of leadership and service. I was very proud to see them receive this great honor. On Sunday, Councilwoman Feldman and Jeffrey and I attended uh, the Austin Boat and Canoe Club's Commissioning Day, which began with a memorial service for those lost at sea. It was a touching ceremony, and I want to thank uh, Michael G. O'Connor and American Legion Post 506 for putting it together every year. Uh, this year was just as great as always. It was wonderful weather for commissioning day as well, and certainly a proud day for, for the Boat and Canoe Club uh, to send the boats off into the river and let everybody enjoy the season. Later that day, I was joined by Councilwoman Feldman, Jeffrey, and DeTore at OVAC's kickoff to EMS Week. Um, OVAC being Austin Volunteer Ambulance Corps, where they dedicated their new ambulance to former town supervisor Martha Dodge. The event was well attended by members of the community, and I want to thank Chief Nick Franzoso, along with my colleagues on the Mid-Hudson Ambulance District Board, uh, including the Honorable Richard Wishney and Honorable Sue Donnelly, for their hard work uh, 
setting up the ambulance district initially to uh, provide exceptional emergency services to our residents at uh, a, a price that all of us as taxpayers can afford. In the coming weeks, including tomorrow evening, there are several receptions highlighting the plans of IFCA to revitalize the Austin community through innovative housing solutions. These informal receptions will be hosted. Say again? Where did I follow? <laughs> so anyway, but they're going on, and I'm not going to tell you where they are because they're not public, but it's going to be a wonderful opportunity for um, many people to learn more about IFCA. Sorry about that. Um, and this Friday, May 26th, the Village of Austin's Downtown Economic Development Fund Council invites you to join them to light the downtown as they light 50 trees with more than 50,000 LED bulbs and take a stroll up our newly lit downtown. Many of our great Main Street restaurants will be offering specials, so keep an eye out for balloons and signs indicating those businesses that are participating. The Greater Austin Chamber of Commerce will be providing music at Market Square. This is sure to be a great evening in our beautiful downtown. In addition, the Village of Austin and the Downtown Economic Development Fund Council are offering opportunities to adopt a tree well to offset the cost of the new beautiful iron borders around each tree. More information can be found on the Village's website at villageofaustin.org. The forecast suggests that it will be great weather to spend time in the parks for Memorial Day weekend. On Saturday, May 27th at 3 p.m., join Sue Radpravar of Studio 95 Zumba Fitness for an outdoor Zumba workout along the riverfront at Lewis Engel Park. Sue hosted many well-attended classes last year, and we're very excited to have her back, and these classes are free. Stay tuned for more dates to come, and make sure to check out the town's Facebook page for updates of Mind, Body, Spirit, Austin. We also anticipate that the spray park will be open for Memorial Day, so come down to Engel Park if your family needs a cool down this weekend. The spray park will be open from noon to 6 p.m. Um, this weekend and throughout the summer months. Next weekend, Scott Craven, former police captain, will be guiding a three-hour boat ride on the Peekskill Evening Star on Saturday, June 3rd, departing promptly at 11 a.m. from the Peekskill waterfront. Scott is quite the nautical history buff, and this promises to be a very interesting educational experience. Tickets are $50, must be purchased by May 27th. Call the Austin Historical Society Museum at 941-0001 for more information. Also next Saturday, June 3rd, local Grammy-nominated acoustic band Sundad will be performing in the Westchester Collaborative Theater's Black Box Theater at 8 p.m. Tickets are $15 and are available at wctheater.org. Okay, we'll make it through. Um, next weekend, Scott Craven will be guiding a three hour. Oh, I already did that. Sorry, <laughs> I lost my place. Excuse me a second. Summer is creeping up on us, so please take some time to review the many great summer programs and camps being offered by the Austin and Briarcliff Recreation Departments. This summer, is the first time classes are being offered at the newly opened Cedar Lane Art Center. And I certainly encourage you to consider enrolling yourself or your child in one of the great programs being offered. Information about summer programs is available on the town's website and the Village of Briarcliff's website. Finally, this coming Monday is Memorial Day, which is an important opportunity to remember the sacrifices made by members of the armed forces in our community from the Revolutionary War until today. There will be parades and ceremonies in Austin and Briarcliff, hosted by our local American Legion posts to mark this important day. The Austin Memorial Day Parade will kick off on Monday, May 29th at 9.30 a.m. at Callum and Croton Avenues, continuing along Croton Avenue and Main Street to Spring Street and ending at Nelson Park. There will be a ceremony at Nelson Park, which is expected to begin around 10.45 a.m. as the parade winds down. Also on Monday, the 29th, the Briarcliff Memorial Day Parade is to begin at noon on Pleasantville Road to Law Park, where there will be a ceremony following the parade. This ceremony will also mark the rededication of the new Law Park Pavilion. I was just out there today, and there is a lot of work being done, so I'm sure they're very excited that that's going to be back in action. At these ceremonies, keep an eye out for some very special wreath displays, which were made by several Austin Girl Scout troops. Uh, we reached out last year and asked the Girl Scouts if they would like to participate in making these wreaths, and they have taken it on with gusto. And we're very proud of that and very excited that they have become part of this celebration and this commemoration. Also, please remember that all town offices will be closed on Monday, May 29th in observance of Memorial Day. 
We will be back in the office on Tuesday, May 30th at 8.30 a.m. Do any of my board colleagues have any additional announcements? Okay. Come with announcements. We'll move on with liaison reports. All right, fantastic. We have no departmental reports? No. Do we have any public comments on any of the agenda items? If so, please come to the microphone and state your name and your residential address. Hi, my name is Audrey Galfand, and my address is 87 Dalmany Road in Briarcliff Manor. Um, and I wanted to speak to the board today and to Supervisor Levenberg. Um, I represent the Briarcliff Austin Indivisible Chapter, which is over 150 members of our community. And we wanted to say how um, happy we are that you have taken up Resolution J tonight which create, which um, for those who haven't read it, and we'll talk about it, I'm sure, um, it's a resolution that protects um, those people living in our communities who might be marginalized. And we just want to say, and I want to say personally, how proud I am to live in a community that has taken this up. A lot of communities have resisted doing this, and it just shows that, you know, we, we really are a community of inclusion. And I think it's something to be very, very proud of. And I just wanted to tell you how grateful your community is and to give you our support in putting this resolution forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else who's come to address the board on any of the resolutions? Well, maybe we need to let her come back again. <laughs> <laughs> Not seeing any, we'll go through to our board resolutions. Resolve that the town board of the town of Austin hereby approves the May 9th, 2017 minutes of the regular meeting as presented. Do I have a motion? So move. Move. Second. Okay. Council has called and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Resolve the town board of the town of Austin hereby approves the May 17th, 2017 minutes of the special meeting as presented. Do I have a motion? Well, well I oh. think the date's wrong. Oh, sorry. May 16th. May 17th was Wednesday. I know. I think we had a Wednesday meeting, though, did we not? For, uh, we yes, you're meeting? correct. It is the 16th. Okay. I will make that correct. <laughs> okay. Okay, so friendly amendment. With that friendly amendment, do I have a motion? With the friendly so amendment, so moved. And a second? <laughs> what a friendly board we have. Thank you. As amended. Uh, all those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Abstention? Abstention. Councilwoman Dettori was not here, I believe. Right. Okay. So in, that's how, that's how you day. do. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Resolved the town board of the town of Austin hereby approves the voucher detail report dated May 23rd, 2017 in the amount of $1,267,972.66. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, so just some highlights from this very large uh, voucher detail report. Uh, the largest is our monthly uh, village uh, police services IMA, which $760,000 for police services for January through May, plus $129,000 for other services. We are billed this way since we do not get tax revenue until April, May from the town tax bills. Um, so that's really why, what bumps it up so much. We do have 100 recycling bins, which are only ordered about every eight years or so for $2,313. We have uh, the tax map maintenance uh, program with CIA for $1,975, which the board approved the contract back in January. Uh, three Texas style grills for our pavilions from Belson Outdoors, and I don't actually have the detail right in front of me for that. Uh, we had a um, the Bobcat excavator, which is split between the highway and the parks, and was approved as part of the 2017 capital work for $56,000. And a rock hammer for Dale Cemetery, also as approved by the 2017 capital work for $7,750. And I can tell you that. Some of these have already been put into very good use in our parks and our cemeteries. So uh, we also have the paving for Cedar Lane Park with that additional uh, 
piece, it ended up being $84,000 and uh, $1,758 for 40 Gordon Avenue demolition after a fire, which was requested of an emergency by the fire department so that they could properly put out the fire and that will be recouped on the tax bill for the property. Are there any other questions or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mentioned? Resolved the town board of the town of Austin hereby authorizes the following properties to be sold at a public auction on Tuesday, July 25th, 2017, pursuant to a judgment of foreclosure and sale has been entered into with New York State Supreme Court, Westchester County, New York. One, house and property at 48 Ellis Place, minimum bid, $62,000. Uh, two, house and property at 15 Meadowbrook Drive, minimum bid, $54,000. Three, house and property at 27 Seacore Road, minimum bid, $102,000. Do we have a motion? So move. Second. Any questions or discussion? Um, I don't know. Check. Um, at last week's work session, our receiver of taxes, uh, Gloria Freed, joined us to give us an update on her office's progress with the upcoming foreclosure auction and to share with us that we will have these three properties up for sale. Um, while we don't relish uh, having to foreclose on properties, it is unfortunately the only way to handle the situation fairly for the rest of the taxpayers. Um, keep your eyes out for the advertisements in the coming weeks. Sometimes these do resolve themselves before they end up um, going to auction in the end. So. Um, we can all be hopeful that that will happen, but should it not happen, um, then then we will be holding this auction in July. All those, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Resolved the town board of the town of Austin authorizes a budget adjustment for capital project 2014-5190 entitled Spray Park Recirculation of $196,197 for project implementation, increasing the project to $416,197 to be funded by a transfer from general fund balance. Increase 370 $71,10, $251,190, $231,197 for Spray Park recirculation. Increase 370 $50,3100, 5190, $231,197 transfer from general fund. Increase 190901, $901,905, $231,197 transfer to capital. And increase 1060, $41,795, $231,197 fund balance. Uh, you do have a motion? So moved. Second. Question? Oh, okay. I was just okay. a little introduction. If you watched our work session last week, our, our engineering team joined us to give the board one last idea on how to make the spray park recirculation system a reality, and it was a good one. By using our annual bidder, we will save significant money on the installation of the system, allowing the water savings over time to pay us back in less than 10 years. Um, this resolution is uh, meant to allow us to begin uh, the capital project, uh, continue the grant application to offset some of these uh, costs and uh, we will also be able to pay back the uh, ban before it goes to bond which will also end up saving us some money uh, but we also are going to be using a uh, fund balance to uh, that two hundred thirty one thousand dollars of fund balance to front some of that money there is an additional amount up in here that was not uh, addressed that came to us after after our work session from um, Andy Teese. He said that there was an unaccounted for $35,000 for electrical work that he said needed to be done above and beyond um, and that had not been included in the original estimate of that 350000 So what's this 416000 now is my question. That includes the electrical that had already been done the, which was forty the fifty thousand right. okay yeah. and then the thirty five thousand dollars and that's how it got there I think that's about right yeah okay it's just this is the kind of thing that drives me insane only because well the three fifty was just for the part of the work it wasn't the, there was already work that had already had well that I understand yeah. but now here's another thirty five 
and another, and this is what, this is what happens. And this is why it concerns me. This is why I don't want to, this is why I have trouble with saying yes to these kinds of projects because it starts out at $100,000 or $150,000 or whatever and now it ends up being three hundred, dollars and now it's four hundred, dollars now it's $416,000. Well, and I, I'm just saying I... Well, we had a com conversation last week and we identified how, how much money we would be saving over the long term. We did, but we also identified a certain amount of money and already within a week we have gone up thirty five thousand dollars. That's true because And I and there's nothing to tell me that in another week we're not gonna hit some other ten thousand dollar thing. And I'm all for the you know, we always want to do these things for the greater good, right? It's because we're going to conserve water and it's better for the environment. And those are good things. And when we did Shine House, it was because we needed to fix certain and we ended up fixing water infrastructure problems. I understand, but we end up, we, we always start with these one numbers and then it's just, it creeps and then you end up in a whole nother place. So, I mean, I would like to say that um, I, I don't think that we're alone in this. I think that unfortunately, um, this this is the kind of in everybody's in everybody's work and and we can ask Councilman Wilshire. Unfortunately, um, oftentimes you do your best to get to capture the most and to go and to estimate high, but you don't want to ever estimate too high because if you estimate too high, then you're not going to see the purpose of spending the money. If you estimate too low, then you're going to end up with all of these overages. We're at the beginning right now where we haven't undertaken the project yet, except for that we started and started laying all that, did all that electrical work. And that's why we decided we didn't want to, at least when we, it, it seemed to me that we had concluded that we didn't want to um, waste the money that had already been expended towards this project. We had come in, we had a much higher estimated um, price in when we went out to bid. Um, I think it was a, almost $200,000 more. And while I, I don't believe that the electrical was even included in that, so that would have still been money on top of that 500 whatever thousand plus. So again, what I think we identified is that within 10 years, this is going to more than repay itself based on the amount that we pay for water. And I understand your gripe, I get it. Um, and, and it's not. I, it's I'd rather it's, it be it's, cons called a concern okay, and a fiscal concern rather than a gripe. But it is but. a concern. But I also think that there's a legitimate, you know, there's a legitimate argument to be made that that um, we, you know, we we spent a lot of time not working on, not looking at this project, and we decided we kind of tabled it. We put it we put it aside. We brought it back because we were kind of have our our feet were being held to the fire. Do you want this grant money or do you not want this grant money? I know, money? and we had a really great conversation about yeah. how this was going to be paid for, and it was a, a lower number. It wasn't yes. lower than the first number, but it was right. a lower number than the next the bid, and there was an issue. I'm just saying yeah. that, this yes, I understand that when you say you're going to get your roof fixed and they give you a quote and sometimes the bid and you have to put a little bit more, but we are talking about lots of money and taxpayer money, right. and I get that we want it to be done, but... This whole concept about we didn't want to just spend $46,000 and let it be to waste is not going to be, for me, the reasoning. That's kind of like saying, no, I don't no, want to no, waste the, no, I know, but you, you, you mentioned part of it. And I'm saying, that's like saying when I bought that pair of shoes for that wedding I didn't go to, I should go and buy the dress too, just yeah, in no, case. So I'm, just you're forgetting I'm, saying, piece of the I'm just saying. Okay, let's look at this number. I still think this number makes sense. I would still like to be able to extend the hours and be able to recirculate the water and to be able to add that water back into our water system. So I am absolutely with you on things that turn into money pits, but I still think this is a very reasonable number and that it will benefit our community and that I get it and I think we should be very diligent about keeping eye, our eye on any increases, but I. And I want to keep our. Wait, 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 I just want to say one other thing. One other point that I want to make is that that this thirty-five thousand dollars is basically one more season of water. So instead of it being paid back in ten years, it would now take eleven years because that's how much we're spending annually on water. If we extend the hours of the um, water park being open, and as you know, in eleven years from now, for paying 
you know, 20, between 25 and $30,000 a year for water, that's one more year of water. You're right. It takes, it's going to take us one more year to get payback on it. That's what it is. This is not the time for discussing this. No, but I think it is because we're going to vote on it. I'm allowed to talk about this all the way until we vote. Well, it, it changed. It did but change it since our work session, so I understand. But it is the time, and 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 it's fine, and I get it. I'm just voicing it so that it's. I'm. We can watch the numbers all we want, but we can watch them climb. And I saw this because I was on this board when we said it was going to cost two hundred or where a hundred thousand dollars, by the way, and then it went to two. So you have to understand where I'm coming from. We went from one to two to four to three fifty something. To 416. So, I think I just did that. I'm that, just saying, and we looked into we can go. I don't want to, I don't, just I, like, I, I mean, in the interim, you know, we looked at it, are there ways to do a smaller system? But the problem is that Westchester County Department of Health said this is the size system that you need for this size spray park, and they and better that size system was a lot bigger, I think, than was anticipated by the because that's what happens when you put out numbers before you actually bid and get information but that would be a I'm, I'm, I just I'm not gonna take any responsibility for that because no, that was a here. long time ago and I wasn't here but I'm you just weren't. saying at this point that additional amount of money is another year's uh, uh, to pay it back and then after that 11 years then we're not paying for this anymore except for a very minimal amount of money so that's one more year okay. you know, okay. all those in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed Abstention. thank you Whereas the town of Vossing is required to collect town, county, and school taxes for the municipality with the onus on the town to make whole the county and school district for any uncollected taxes. And whereas the receiver of taxes has been approached by a property owner requesting a short-term payment plan for the owner-occupied property at 53 Brookwood Drive. And whereas the town board pursuant to Article 5 of the Ossing Town Code as authorized by Section 1184 of the New York Real Property Tax Law before entry of a final judgment may withdraw a parcel for which payment of real property taxes is delinquent from a foreclosure proceeding and enter into an installment plan for payment of all delinquent taxes as well as interest and penalties and does occasionally grant such a plan and has the discretion to accept or reject any proposal by a residential or commercial property owner providing the owner meets the eligibility requirements set forth in section 180-17 of the town code and the payment plan conforms to the requirements for such a repayment plan set forth in section 180-18 of the town code. Now therefore be it resolved that the board, town board of the town of Vossing hereby grants the aforementioned payment plan which terms comply with the town code to this property owner who has been determined to be eligible with the understanding that this sets no precedent going forward for this or any other property in the future. Do you have a motion? So moved. Okay. So awarding a payment plan is up to the discretion of the town board. In this case, the homeowner approached our uh, tax receiver, Gloria Freed, for a payment plan and was found to be eligible. We are happy to be able to extend this extra help to this resident, and we have no doubt that their payments will be timely. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention. Whereas the property at 48 Garden, Gordon Avenue was destroyed by fire on April 25th, 2017, Whereas an emergency existed based upon an evaluation by the building inspector that created an unsafe condition and the property owners were not able to be contacted. And whereas at the recommendation of the town building inspector, a contractor was dispatched to the site and instructed to perform work to ensure the health and safety of neighboring properties as a result of the fire. Therefore, be it resolved that the town board of the town of Ossing hereby directs the receiver of taxes to add a charge to the tax bill for the property at 48 Gordon Avenue, Barcliffe Manor, New York, in the amount of $1,758 in accordance with the bill issued to the town by said contractor. Do I have a motion? I move. Second. Uh, so this resolution speaks for itself, but I do want to share that um, whenever we have a fire in our community is always tragic. Um, we're very thankful that no one was injured in this devastating fire and it was contained and 
very thankful to the uh, Briarcliff Fire Department, especially Fire Chief Garcia, for their fast response and ensuring everyone's safety. Um, and to all of all of the emergency responders, responders who, who responded that day. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Whereas the town of Boston has long discussed a, a reapportionment of the mortgage recording tax revenue from Westchester County based on the unique geographic boundaries of the town's unincorporated area. And whereas current New York state law directs towns to apply mortgage recording tax revenue to the general expenses of the town. And whereas New York state law also dictates that this revenue is to be apportioned to an incorporated village within a town in accordance with the village's percentage assessed value within the town as a whole. And whereas the town board has unanimously agreed to apply a share of this revenue in a similar fashion to which New York state law dictates to apportioning revenue to incorporated villages in accordance with the unincorporated area's percentage of assessed value within the town as a whole to the unincorporated fund in the 2017 budget. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board of the town of Austin hereby calls upon the state of New York to permit home rule legislation Assembly Bill number A6886 and Senate Bill number S6469. 29. 29, excuse me, on this uh, specific circumstance within the town of Austin. And be it further resolved that the town supervisor is hereby authorized to complete paperwork as requested by New York State to enact the above. Uh, do I have a motion? Move. Second. Second. Okay. Last year, the board unanimously agreed to change the way that we apportion the mortgage recording tax revenue in a way that essentially treats the unincorporated area of the town as though it were a village <laughs> within the town. Our representatives in the state assembly and senate have agreed to carry this bill for us because right now it is not legally uh, clear that we are allowed to do it without such legislation. And we will be moving forward with the paperwork uh, once this resolution is passed. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Whereas the town board wishes to designate court attendants of the town of Austin as peace officers. Now, therefore, be resolved that the town board of the town of Austin hereby calls upon the state of New York to permit home rule legislation, Assembly Bill Number 6928 and Senate Bill. S5862 to designate court attendants as such within the town of Austin and be it further resolved that the town supervisors hereby authorized to complete paperwork as requested by New York State to enact the above. Do I have a motion? We'll move. Second. So this is an issue that uh, this board has been trying to correct for several years even though this legislation was actually vetoed by the governor last time after passing both the assembly and senate. We are hopeful that the appetite uh, may have since changed by the governor and we can get this moving to save money for our taxpayers. Similar to the last resolution, this re resolution will authorize us to get the paperwork uh, up to Albany. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ditches? Whereas the town board of the town of Ossing unanimously passed a resolution on December 20th, 2016 confirming the desire to reaffirm the town's commitment to remaining an inclusive community and to stay true to our shared values. And whereas the town board wishes to reinstate that commitment, now therefore be it resolved. One, the town of Austin decries and denounces acts of anti-Semitism, racism, bigotry, xenophobia, Islamophobia, hatred, and diversiveness, including those based on a victim's gender, sexual orientation, or gender identity and will continue to work in concert with community leaders, school officials, and law enforcement agencies to apprehend individuals responsible for any crimes of this nature. Two, the town of Austin is committed to upholding and protecting the civil and human rights of all individuals regardless of their race, religion, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, gender, gender identity, or national origin. Three, the town of Austin is committed to protecting the life, safety, and security of all individuals, regardless of their race, religion, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, gender identity, or national origin. 
Four, the policy of the Town of Austin Department's officers, personnel, and agents is not to inquire about or collect from individuals, including but not limited to a crime victim, a witness, or a person who calls or approaches the police seeking assistance, information concerning citizenship or immigration status, except where there is an investigation of potential illegal activity. Five, or an investigation of potential illegal activity results in the disclosure of a person's citizenship or immigration status. That information will neither be used nor disclosed in any manner that isolates uh, violates, excuse me, local, state, or federal law. Six, in carrying out such work, the Town of Austin Departments, including the Austin Police Department, recognize the essential need to respond to victims reporting crimes or injuries and to encourage residents to summon help when needed. Seven, the Town of Austin will coordinate with other public safety agencies, including federal law enforcement authorities, to apprehend any individual, regardless of race, religion, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, gender identity, national origin, origin, or immigration status for which probable cause exists that such individual threatens the safety of our community. And eight, the Town of Austin will disseminate and publicize this resolution throughout the village, including, that should be town. Oh, yes. yes, what? <laughs> this was adopted from the Village resolution. Including translating this resolution to Spanish and providing it to the Hispanic community. Do I have a motion? No motion. Second. Okay. So um, last week, our work session, we had a, a very um, a fruitful conversation with the uh, chief of the Aussie Police Department, Chief Kevin Sylvester, uh, to discuss. Uh, we spent a lot of time talking about the resolved parts of this uh, resolution and uh, felt that the original whereases that were included in the Village of Austin's resolution, which is what we were using more or less as a template, not only as a template, but as sort of the agreed upon terms that the uh, police department felt very comfortable that we were well represented, not only the what they are hoping to achieve, but making our community safer uh, by identifying what our practices are and allowing people to feel that they can trust our local police department, which is the most important thing to make sure that everybody um, is safe in their homes. So the resolution part of this is um, really matches exactly what the Village of Austin has done, but the earlier part of it, the whereas, refers to our unity resolution, which we adopted December 20th of 2016, that we spent quite a lot of time crafting and we believe uh, really lays out the basis for the, resol the resolved part of this uh, resolution. Can so, I say that a little bit clear? Because I was like, I wasn't sure. Okay, yes. so we took the part of the village's resolution <laughs> that spoke directly to the policies that the police department utilizes um, in order for people to understand exactly um, where they, you know, what, what, what their policies are and the fact that we want our community to be safe in that if they are victims of crime, that they will go to the police department no matter what their status is or gender or orientation or any other such thing, that anything, religion or anything, that they will feel confident and comfortable that this community um, holds them and 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 will make them safe. And so that part of the resolution that speaks to the policies of the police department we took verbatim. Um, the beginning preamble part, which is the whereas and whereas whereas, we did we just incorporated our own previous unity um, portion. So. That's, Thanks for clarifying. I'm Using sorry, you're status. a little congested. <laughs> I have a lot of It's getting worse, progressively worse throughout the evening. <laughs> yeah. uh, but yes, um, I think that you know the key is is that we um, wanted to identify the issues of um, that status is not something that is looked at when um, determining, you know, immigration when status crime. is right, when reporting a crime. That's not um, how how the our police react. So I wanted to make that very clear. Uh, so are there, any, are there any more discussion or anything else anybody wanted to say? I mean, I'm, I'm very proud, again, of our community for adopting this uh, resolution. Um, 
proud of our board uh, for continuing to make a point that we are an inclusive community and one that um, wants to support and protect all of those who live here in our borders. Any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Fantastic. Thank you. And thank you for your support, community. Whereas on or about December 15, 2016, Ballroom Studio of Westchester applied for a renewal of its cabaret license originally issued August 23, 2016, pursuant to Chapter 68 of the Town Code. And whereas when considering the original application at its August 23, 2016 meeting, the town board expressed concern about the noise impacts to the nearby residential properties from the studio's operation and expressed a desire for the applicant to conduct sound testing during the appropriate hours to ensure no adverse impacts. And whereas the town board opened a public hearing on the license renewal application at its February 7th 2017 meeting and has continued the hearing and whereas the town board received ample comments from uh, nearby residents regarding the noise impact from the operation of the studio especially late at night and many of which involved calls to the police and whereas in an effort to resolve these issues the town board kept the public hearing open and directed the applicant to in consultation with the village's consultant engineer propose and develop mitigation measures to be presented to the town board to show how the applicant intends to resolve the ongoing noise issue. And whereas as a result of this ongoing process, the town board has not issued the applicant the requested cabaret license renewal. And whereas since the last continuation of the hearing, the applicant has finally taken some steps to mitigate the noise by installing certain soundproofing material. And whereas irrespective of the soundproofing, there is ample evidence that the applicant, A, permits patrons to exit the rear door to smoke or otherwise congregate, causing disturbances to neighboring residences, B, utilizes different amplification levels or equipment for different events, some of which create loud and disturbing noise beyond the property lines of applicant's property, C, reduces the volume for short periods of time when advised for noise complaints, only to raise the volume after the police have left the premises. Whereas, despite the lack of responsiveness by the applicant from August 2016 until the installation of soundproofing material in the past week, in light of the applicant's recent efforts to attempt to mitigate the noise impacts, the town board wishes to give the applicant an additional opportunity to remedy these issues before considering further restrictions or even denial of additional renewals. Now, therefore, it be resolved, the town board hereby grants the applicant a license renewal which shall expire on December 31st, 2017, subject to the following conditions. One, the applicant shall pay the required fee for the license renewal as set forth in the town's fee schedule prior to continuing operation. Two, going forward, the applicant shall provide the town supervisor's office with at least seven days' notice of all events, classes, and or activities that will be held at the studio that will last past 8 p.m., Three, by June 15, 2017, the applicant shall implement all of the following or submit an, a written statement to the town board as to why the applicant is unable to implement any of them, in which case the town board reserves the right to review the continuation of the applicant's license. A, restricting access to the rear door by installing uh, alarm panic hardware. B, developing a direct communication system with the neighboring residents who have noise complaints. C, requiring DJs and bands performing at the studio to sign a statement acknowledging the requirement to comply with the town's noise code, which is chapter 130. D, prohibiting a DJ's use of their own sound equipment and requiring that only the house system, which the town board understands does not have a subwoofers, be used. This list is not exclusive and the applicant is encouraged to take additional mitigation measures it believes will resolve the noise issues. Four, at any event class activity that will last after 8 p.m., Barbara Antis or another responsible employee of the applicant with the ability to contact Ms. Antis in order to address complaints shall be on site for the entirety of the event class activity. 
If the police are called as a result of a noise disturbance immediately after being notified by the police, the sound level shall be reduced and shall not be increased during the remainder of such event, class, or activity. Five, the applicant shall submit an application to the town for renewal of its license for 2018 no later than November 1st, 2017 to allow the town board adequate opportunity to review the application, review compliance with the conditions of this resolution, and to receive public comment prior to their current license expiring on December 31st, 2017. And be it further resolved, the applicant shall make a good faith and every reasonable effort to comply with the conditions set forth above and multiple violations of these conditions may result in the applicant's license being revoked or renewal application being denied. And be it further resolved, the town board shall comply with the requirements and standards of town code chapter 68 in deciding whether and under what terms to grant any future renewal license in compliance with the above reference conditions does not guarantee the granting of the renewal nor does it establish or limit the parameters or conditions that may be placed upon the future renewal if granted. Do we have a motion? No. Oh, sorry, there's no public comment at this point. Second. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make one tiny amendment, which was that it mentioned um, in the one, two, three, four, the fifth whereas. Uh, Adam Clerk, it says Village's consultant engineer, it's the town's consultant engineer. Do we have a second? Had a motion. Do we have a second? second. Yeah. Northern made the motion and Liz seconded. Okay, great. Okay. Um, is there any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? I abstain. Okay, so you know what you have to do. Talking, be talking if you want, right? At the very end. At the very end. I think we're almost there. Are we not? I think. Okay. Okay. We have no correspondence to be received and filed. Uh, monthly reports resolved at town board. The town of Ossie hereby accepts the following monthly reports for the month of April 2017. The GE. Crotonville helicopter report. Do we have a motion? So move. Any discussion? Yeah, actually, I wanted to, to say something. You know, we've had some town residents who have mentioned um, helicopter noise. Um, sometimes it sounds low and whatever. And actually, I had experienced some helicopter noise. It was the big subject of a Facebook thread. Um, I looked into it and found out. A lot of people always assume it's GE, and and it, it really is not GE. Um, GE has been a really good neighbor in terms of they provide us with a report. They only are allowed to fly between certain regular times, and I think it's like 8 in the morning till, no, they do it a little bit later, but it's never later than 8 at night. Um, and, and they are only allowed to have a certain number of flights, and they never, ever even meet that number. But um, I looked into some am, uh, helicopter noise I received. One night, it was Westchester County Public Safety. Unfortunately, they must have been looking for somebody because they kept circling for 15 minutes. Um, and another time, it was um, Westchester Medical Center's patient transport um, and they f and it sounds very very loud because they evidently have two and I'm gonna say this wrong so whoever flies two, they have four blades and two engines I think or two somethings so they're big they carry eight up to eight people it's pretty loud so just whenever you hear a helicopter and you think it's just GE it's generally not <laughs> it's other other surroundings I mean, ironically, launched helicopter or you know had a helicopter yeah. and that they that and had an agreement with the town until ask I, Crotonville. <laughs> but I'm just saying, but not knowing that, I, you know, I hear helicopters for a variety of reasons, and I don't assume it's anything except for our emergency services or something else like yeah. that. 
And I think if you don't know that there's somebody permitted to use it, then you just understand that sometimes you hear a helicopter. Well, the unincorporated town very much knows that GE yeah, has I a helipad, and so they the tend us, to so. think that it's them because that we know it. We, um, but having done a, a little bit of homework, just because you wonder, like, uh, is the neighbor doing the right thing? And so, just I thought maybe the the people might want to hear that. Okay, thank you. So, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Judges. That completes your resolutions. We'll move into visitor recognition. Is there anyone who's come to address the board? Again, if you have, please state your name and your residential address. Or any, anything at all. You want to come up? Yeah, it, you can come up on anything at all. Just as a point of clarification with the resolution, when we spoke before, um, we were, said that we regularly have classes um, until 10 o'clock at night. But point two of the resolution was that we notify you classes uh, past 8 o'clock. So um, I'm not sure what the procedure is. Do you want an email every day? I mean, it doesn't really kind of make well, sense. We I mean, said if you, if you have a, uh, the weekly email would be would suffice. Would be, right. Just in, I just wanted to clarify the weekly email. Typically, the emails go out on a Monday for the events that happen on the upcoming week. And if that's okay with you, then we can comply with, with that. Decided that, that, was, yeah, that. I mean, that's, that's absolutely okay. fine. We, again, uh, I don't want to overburden you. They just want an idea and we don't want of what's going emails. on. So if there's an issue, absolutely. So I just want to make sure that we're okay yes. with the with the notice requirements and how you know it. And we'll send the the email to your email address. Yes, you will. Okay, great. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like before you sit down. Uh, have Have you thought of an ante room, or do you have enough space in that back for an ante room? That would cut down on if somebody opened the door. Or it just stays in that little room. You know what I'm talking about? Um, it's possible. We'd have to look into it. But I mean, at this point, as long as, like I said, we're we're trying to be good neighbors. Yeah. So at this point, we're we're looking to to do a lot. And this, so far, this, I think this is going to work as it is now. Okay. But great comment. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else who's come to address the board? Not seeing any, may I have a motion for adjournment to executive session for personnel and advice of council? So moved. Second. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. <laughs> oh, do I have, I'm sorry, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Attention. Thanks, everyone, for joining us tonight. We appreciate you coming out. And uh, those who supported the unity resolution, just want to uh, say that we're grateful for that support. Uh, as a reminder, town offices will be closed this coming Monday, May 27th. The town board will not be meeting that week as it is our fifth Tuesday. I look forward to seeing everyone on Tuesday, June 6th for our work session at 16 Croton Avenue. Good night and have a great week and a great Memorial Day weekend. I hope to see you at some of the commemorations. Bye-bye.